everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my Assassin's Creed series perspective. As you can see, I got a fuck ton of this shit. And I decided to do it now because I had gotten Assassin's Creed Mirage over the holidays, and I'd just beaten it, and I kind of want to talk, uh, and I wanted to save it out and kind of talk about it. Granted, there's a lot of stuff with Ubisoft and all that, but this as you can see, is a series that I'm mostly interested in. Now, granted, that has waned as the series has gone on, and Ubisoft has decided that they have no idea what the fuck they're doing with this thing, and just fuckity doo da, fuckity day kind of shit. Did I put this in order? Yeah, I did. All right. So, if you have not played Assassin's Creed before or heard about it, it normally is about assassins. Uh, I say that because that's at least what the central conceit of, like, the first one is. Let's read the back for a minute. I've de uh, dedicated my life to the study of the deadly arts. I can blend in with any crowd, strike from any direction, and eliminate anyone with a single thrust of my blade. My name is Altair, and my actions will be remembered for ages to come. And master the art of the kill. So this is set during the Crusades, and it mainly started the whole concept of assassins versus Templars. Uh, the Templars are going for control, Assassins are going for freedom. That is the basic one that we get at the start. I will then have to shift towards different kind of stuff as it starts going even more fucking off the rails. So, first things first. You would look at this and you're like, okay, cool, white hood, uh, this kind of Assassin's Blade kind of thing, which they kind of get rid of their ring finger uh, to kind of show their dedication and everything, though that kind of goes out, out the window throughout the whole thing. You're thinking, okay, this is set during the Crusades. Ha-ha! Plot twisty, this is more of a sci-fi one as well. Now, granted, there are kind of two aspects of this that are not usually balanced very well together. Uh, I mean, this fucker's got, like, a lot of fucking games in it, and they keep going back and forth between wanting to be the sci-fi thing and wanting to be the historical kind of thing, because we are experiencing Desmond Miles, who has been captured by Abstergo, who is the modern-day version of the Templars, and they're trying to find pieces of Eden, uh, precursor kind of tech, usual kind of sci-fi tropey stuff. It gets its own kind of brand of crazy as it goes kind of going forward. So, he is using this thing called the Animus to relive genetic memories of his ancestor, Altair, and showing him kind of going through, and it definitely does some interesting kind of game design elements, i.e. you can't kill innocent people, so you can't go GTA, ah, and just fucking, like, you get killed, you get killed, because that desyncs you from the whole program. So, it does introduce some interesting kind of limitations that are then thrown out as we get into later kind of parts of the series. So, he's kind of going through here, trying to figure out what's going on. We get the whole kind of spiel that the actual last kind of Templar that he has to go after is actually his master and dealing with this, like, Apple of Eden and how it can kind of control them. And we get kind of the introduction of us, the humans, pretty much being built as a slave race to the Aisu. And that this, uh, an important part of this series, this came out in, like, 2007. There's a lot of interesting franchises that popped up around that point. Uh, and this was kind of bringing up the whole kind of Mayan calendar, solar flare kind of thing. That at least goes through Assassin's Creed uh, 2, Brotherhood, Revelations, of course, ending in 3. Uh, before everything kind of gets reset. Uh, because that's when we hit and we start then experimenting. Now, this one is the most kind of bare bones. It I can understand how it gets kind of repetitive. You do your tailing missions, you get this information. You don't really connect that much uh, with uh, Altair because it's more like, you're an assassin, you want to do assassin shit. So it, they're trying to figure it out and kind of make it a little bit different than kind of Splinter Cell, where you've got, you've got gadgets, but you don't have high-tech gadgets, at like a Splinter Cell. So you're going through and it's like, oh, okay, sometimes the parkour works and sometimes it doesn't. Granted, it gets a little bit more fluidy throughout certain kind of aspects of the series, but then the thing is we start getting into different kind of time places that aren't exactly in really big cities, and it kind of limits your architectural kind of things that you can do with parkour, and you start 
jumping off weird fucking shit. This also introduced like eagle vision with the and like this leap of faith where you leap off a of shit and land into hay stacks and you're like, I'm fucking fine. It's like, okay. But again, it's a game design choice. Uh, now granted, this one gets to the most kind of limitations because it's the first kind of one to kind of build us into the series and the franchise. And Altair, while being the cool one to like introduce us, isn't that well fleshed out until we get later to uh, what a lot of people, and myself included, uh, think is the best kind of protagonist, uh, Ezio Adatore. Uh, he's just this suave-ass ladies' man. I mean, you fucking do the anime shit and you actually come out as a, as a baby and shit, but his family gets uh, taken out by the Templars and he starts going through and going through Renaissance Italy and everything. Let's see. I'll seek vengeance upon those who have betrayed my family. Only to uncover cons uh, a conspiracy bigger than I could have imagined. I'm Ezio Auditore de Firenze. I am an assassin. He He's just really kind of cool. And of course, why is he so cool and everything? Because he pretty much gets three games to his ass. He gets his own trilogy in this franchise. Which works out pretty well. We pretty much go through Renaissance Italy here. Which has a lot of kind of cool stuff. We get Da Vinci involved. Uh, it introduces and is pretty much Ubisoft's uh, open world at its best, where this is kind of like the gta -ification that worked out, where it's not like complete checklists and everything. It was pretty fun to kind of go around, learn what's kind of going on, get a little bit more into the kind of present day. We start introducing more of the kind of bleed-over effect that was hinted at in Assassin's Creed 1, where we're like, oh, okay, uh, Desmond's going to pretty much, through use of the Animus, get these kind of skills and become an assassin in the present day. That doesn't work. Even though it'd be cool, and you'd probably work into different kind of aspects of why Desmond wouldn't be using cars or anything in giant kind of cities, they just kept going with the historical aspects, which I'm fine with, but they kind of do some weird shit with Desmond as it kind of keeps going on. So we're dealing with most of what's kind of going on in Italy, figuring out all the kind of crazy shit, building up his Uncle Mario's fucking villa, getting this armor from Altair. That was actually pretty cool. 1476 to 1499. Let's see. And these ones had kind of more kind of, uh, uh, enemies, kind of like your assassin targets you are kind of at least a little bit more acquainted with because all tight years, he didn't really have any kind of, uh, prior kind of personal connections. Uh, this one with Ezio, it was a little bit more personal since his family got kind of taken out. Rodrigo Borga is the one that he's got to, like, take out. And, of course, we've got another Apple of Eden. We get to 1488. Dealing with, like, a vault. Let's see. Oh. Of course, we get this whole kind of, like, Eden thing with, like, Adam and Eve, the first man and woman. Then we get into kind of, like, DLC kind of stuff. Yeah, that's another kind of aspect that gets kind of stupid with this, is that the, you never really get... You get your DLC, but then it, they don't really have that many kind of collections that kind of, like, collect it until, like, vastly later. So I didn't really get into those DLCs. Brotherhood! This one gets kind of cool. This is like building up Ezio to be like kind of a master assassin. He's going through Rome. That Rome, like, they did a pretty good job of like setting up kind of ultimate kind of armor sets for Ezio. Because you had all tight years in the first one. Everything kind of gets fuckity dude on. You have to kind of go and like take some shit out. This also introduced a multiplayer aspect that it's like, um, was interesting. But only if Ubisoft actually committed to it, which they really didn't. Because we did get some kind of uh, multiplayer co-ops in, like, Unity. Yeah. And then they're just like, fuck it. Let's see. I've always fought alone, but uh, one man cannot defeat the entire Templar Order. So I've recruited my fellow assassins. Together we will cleanse the corruption from the holy city of Rome. Together we will forge the Brotherhood. And that was pretty interesting, getting this kind of, like, old school kind of Roman kind of outfit. Uh, again, you're going after pretty much the Borgias at that point, I believe. Let me see. Oh, 
oh yeah, Borgia's alive, so he's kind of like gonna have to go after him. Let's see here. Any other kind of stuff? Then it's pretty much a piece of grab, grab the piece of Eden and keep it from the Templars. And it's like, okay. Again, most of the history aspects, the more things, like how they kind of contextualize what the history is kind of going on. This is always the kind of interesting stuff that like historical fiction has for me. Kind of like the Outlander series and the Temeriere series. Utilizing the historical figures that we've seen throughout and at these certain kind of time periods and trying to figure out what would work within the story and what kind of goes on. Being like, okay, we know that this kind of dude had all this kind of stuff and then you just kind of play around with it and see kind of what you can do and what kind of works. And I know that sounds kind of weird, but like we always have these myths and everything from history and it's kind of cool to see, oh, here's the Borgias and their empire. What would happen if, like, assassins were behind it? And screwing over and taking all these people out or whatnot. It's, like, interesting. And then that gives you interesting kind of gameplay perspectives. You get a little bit of freedom, uh, but the series kind of gets a little bit... It kind of gets open, but you still are a little bit kind of constrained on how you can go about and take down certain kind of targets. Like... You're not going to be able to drag, you're not going to do a D&D &D kind of scenario where you can drag like 30 fucking powder kegs underneath a castle and just be like, yo, fuck nuts, eat it, and then like take it all out. That would, that would be a level of the destruction and capability that you'd be able to do in a game that would be fucking amazing. But it's not to that kind of level. You're like, okay, I got my assassin's blade. How am I going to get in here? And how am I going to get out without getting completely and utterly fucked up? And as it progresses, Ezio's uh, fighting abilities, well, not fighting abilities, but the combat system gets better because in the first one, if you get surrounded by people, you're usually kind of fucked. Ezio, you at least have a better kind of ability to go on. You get fucking two uh, Assassin's Blades to do like parries and shit like that. But it's not the most kind of advanced and dark... Ugh. I don't I hate to kind of compare it to Dark Souls, but like it doesn't have the kind of like if you completely fuck up, you die and you lose everything. It it's not that kind of a deep of a system. I would actually say that it would be better to compare it to kind of like the Witcher kind of system, where that one you have to pay attention, otherwise you're gonna have a really bad time if you don't. This one it's like okay, I gotta have to pay attention, otherwise I gotta either reload or this is get a little bit fuckity doo dah. It doesn't get to the level where it completely and utterly taint punches you and then pulls your nose hairs out through your asshole. That's Dark Souls. Uh, this is more just like, okay, it's kind of basic because they want... It's still that kind of balancing act. They want you to do more stealth, and if you're in a combat scenario, they kind of want you to more escape. Ezio, you could at least deal with some shit, as long as they don't mob your ass completely and utterly horrendously. So then we get to, pretty much, uh, Revelations, which gets us to Constantinople, and starts introducing some other kind of weird shit, like a tower defense game. I don't know why the fuck they put this in here. Uh, like, we got Old Man Ezio. This is like his Logan kind of run. Let's see here. I've always lived by the creed. My blades have dispensed justice and uh, death and justice in equal measure. Yet I am no close to discovering, no closer to discovering the truth behind our order. So I must walk the path of my ancestor Altair, in whose footsteps I will find my true purpose. Again, pretty much trying to figure out. What's going on with these Aisu and these pieces of Eden? And as you can tell, it keeps pretty much just kind of like, this one is at least a kind of holding pattern of like, what are we doing here? What's going on? Istanbul, uh, Constantinople, 1511 AD. Introducing subject 16. Uh, the previous Animus test subject got to link Altair and Ezio to reintegrate his splintered consciousness and wake from his, his coma. Let's see. Hmm. 
What do we got here? Learning more about like what happened to Altair after he took out the traitor's mentor Al Mualim. Uh, his friend staged a coup against him and executed Altair's youngest son. And Ezio eventually gets Altair's apple, uh, getting a message from Jupiter, a member of the first civilization, the Isu, they'll eventually be called. And most of them are patented after gods, uh, pretty much Jupiter, Juno, Minerva. Then we also get into the Norse pantheon as well. It's like, what the fuck? Uh, uh, they who explains that his race has studied methods to save Earth from destruction and transmitted all the collected data to a central vault, the Grand Temple. Uh, tells Delsman that he must find the temple before an impending solar flare kills all of humanity. And then, of course, that gets us to Assassin's Creed 3, which puts us in the American Revolution. Uh, this one was kind of interesting. Now, granted, there's also Assassin's Creed Rogue, which I have not played, which actually lets us play from the perspective of a Templar. Uh, I, might have, I might play that one eventually, but... This one, uh, we play as Connor, and we at first kind of start around as his father, who is a Templar, and, like, he was a former, uh, let's see, who was it? Was Hytham? One of them was a former assassin. See, this was interesting, but the thing is, it was more, uh, wilderness, we had naval warfare, which then brought us to fucking Assassin's Creed Black Flag, pretty much making us into pirates. And it's like, okay, again, the bloat and everything starts kind of getting into the field, and we're like, okay, Connor at least is still an assassin. This starts getting into kind of parts where it's a little bit like, what? But it's interesting, uh, the American colonies, 1775, as a Native American assassin uh, fights to protect his land and his people, he will ignite the flames of a young nation's revolution. And again, playing through, seeing George Washington and Benjamin Franklin and figuring out what's kind of going on, uh, trying to rebuild your kind of base of operations because the assassins got taken out. And of course, uh, we see that Desmond goes through the whole vault thing, uh, he kills Lucy accidentally under the control of an apple, and he pretty much sacrifices himself to stop the solar flare thing from killing everyone. That's like, oh, okay, how does this thing go on from here? Uh, we evidently play as ourselves, kind of doing kind of shit. Let me see. I think that's how it kind of works out. But we pretty much see that Connor's going after his father. And Juno is pretty much the main uh, antagonistic force of the Aisu because she's pretty much digitized and is like a complete asshole. And so Desmond chooses to sacrifice himself to save humanity and give the opportunity to fight Juno. So this one brings us to Edward Kenway, who is the Pirate, an eventual member of the Assassin, uh, Brotherhood of Assassins, uh, father of the future Colonial Templars, Grandmaster Haytham Kenway, and grandfather to uh, Connor. So you pretty much just go around and be as a pirate, uh, but yet doing weird assassin kind of stuff. So this is where they were pretty much experimenting of like, would a pirate game be viable? The answer is yes. 
Uh, Skull and Bones, from what I've heard, sh <laughs> like, they pretty much use this as the basis for, like, Skull and Bones, and it's just like, okay, this is where it starts getting kind of fuckity doo dah because the Aisu and the Precursor story takes over. They took down the Desmond kind of one, and you're this kind, you actually kind of play yourself or a tester as an Abstergo Entertainment. The unnamed player is hired by Abstergo Entertainment, a subsidiary of Abstergo, to examine the memories of Desmond's ancestor, Edward Kenway, uh, Kenway looking for eating shit and everything. And you're just like, okay. Now, as a pirate game, sure, this is good. You're going around, sea shanties, naval combat, uh, hunting whales and treasure and all that kind of stuff. And then you're fighting different kind of pirate-themed uh, historical figures and everything like that. But you're like, okay, but am I really an assassin? And this is where the conceit kind of starts getting a little bit screwball-y. Now granted, we do have two main ones where you're still pretty much an assassin. However, that kind of starts to kind of go away as they go more into kind of an RPG kind of aspect. This one, during the French Revolution, which is actually pretty cool, going around Notre Dame, this one pretty much had, uh, this one started on the Xbox One PS4 uh, kind of trend by that, and really wasn't as optimized as it should have. There was a lot of fucking issues with it at the beginning, but it was kind of cool to go along with the French Revolution and kind of see what's kind of going on there. However, its fragmentation is pretty much of your unnamed Abstergo person trying to find half, like, sages. Because that's what was started in uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. With Sage dead, the player is contacted by the assassins, but neither side is able to explain Sage's presence or identify his followers the instruments of the first will. They're kind of like, I don't know what's going on! And you're like, I don't know what's going on either. It, Rogue Unity. I'm still doing assassins versus Templars. Oh, Thomas Germain. Arno, Arno. Arno was okay. I didn't have a problem with him as a protagonist, but of course, since we don't have anybody to kind of like latch onto, it's kind of like, okay, let's kind of see what's going on here. Thankfully, the time period, and again, working within the historical kind of aspects of what's going on at that time period, and of course, running around Paris really works very well. The issues that came into effect with pretty much three and Black Flag is that you really didn't have many cities to explore the architecture, go around and parkour. This changed that because you're, during, you're in Paris during the French Revolution. You're going around Notre Dame, uh, seeing all this kind of shit, trying to find apples and Eden Tech and all that shit. And Syndicate takes us to London. So this one was pretty cool. This one, you had Jacob and Evie Fry. Huh. And... They each play a little bit differently. Uh, Jacob is more kind of the bruiser. This is 1868. The Industrial Revolution fattens the purses of the privileged while the working class struggles to survive until a pair of assassins emerge from the underworld to rally to their defense. Again, the historical aspects are kind of better done in this one, uh, but it's still just like you don't really get as much as Ezio. Ezio worked out pretty good, and it's just like, all right. And this kind of gets a little bit exacerbated as we start going into uh, more of mainly uh, Odyssey and Valhalla because then it gets more kind of RPG kind of aspect. And we still have Juno doing some weird shit in the background. So we've just pretty much got this asshole in the machine just being like, woo. Well, you don't really get that much kind of development on the modern day uh, assassins versus Templar front. Helix player, uh, now an assassin initiate, uh, contacted by Bishop, and it's just finding other pieces of Eden. I mean, you work around to, like, uh, do pretty much the open world aspect that's become pretty much part and partial. Liberate certain kind of things, check off things on the map. It's where the bloat really starts to get into the kind of mess. 
Like Assassin's Creed 2 is where they had a really good kind of balance where it's like, okay, I'm good with this. And that's like, checkpoint, checkpoint. Ah, fuck me, fuck me. And you just see it like keep growing and growing. And then we get into these kind of aspects. This is the kind of biggest kind of shift in the Assassin's Creed series because it really changes up and uh, except for Mirage, these aren't really assassins things. I mean, stuff's bolted on, but they're more RPGs set in certain kind of historical contexts and really should have been their own games. This, I think, is more of a dilution to the series and should have mainly been, okay, we got this idea, let's actually just make a game on it instead of, uh, okay, I'm going to make an analogy that's going to be kind of weird, but I hope it kind of helps. What Ubisoft did here is like what Ford has done with a Mustang. Like, there was a hatchback Mustang, and I'm like, Mustangs are usually sports cars. What the fuck are you doing making a hatchback? And then uh, they want to sell an electric car. Cool. I'm all right with an electric car. Mustang Mach-E. Doesn't look anything like a fucking Mustang at all. It's not even really a sports car. It's an SUV. Why the fuck would you do this? Because they think the name Assassin's Creed will sell the game more and better. That's why they also kind of started that with Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. The aspect that gets into nuttiness is I understand how game publishers and companies and developers are hesitant to try new things. It's fun. I understand how expensive making a video game is. But you would see people experimenting during, I mean, the inception of video games and to the 360 era, but you don't really see that much experimentation in the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, and then even to now the Series X and the PlayStation 5. They usually stick to certain kind of things and then try and, like, insert fucking shit into a certain kind of thing more than anything else. Only other kind of one to kind of change up things, which I will get to at a certain other kind of series perspective, is the Final Fantasy series. Shifting from uh, turn-based combat to action combat, like real-time battle combat, which can work when it's done well, but that's a different kind of crowd than those that have usually come before. And I don't think that turn-based combat is on the apps. You just have to execute it better and not just sit on your ass for it. Uh, Dragon Quest is still popular and good. The Persona series has good turn-based combat as well. Final Fantasy's games have had good turn-based combat as well. Uh, I, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't experiment. I'm fine with that. But you have to get into the aspect of when is the experimentation gone to a point where I am a Magi in Egypt. I am a Spartan in ancient Greece. I am a Viking. Out of all these motherfuckers, the Viking is like, you are not an assassin. You are a berserker motherfucker going to fuck shit, fuck shit up, going, oh, super yell, naked, bloody on battle shrooms, wrecking shit. Now, granted, you do do Viking shit in the game. I don't know why you're calling it an Assassin's Creed thing, and I don't know why you kind of now changed up how the whole thing's kind of going out for it. I.e., instead of Templars and Assassins, we have the Order of the Ancients pretty much following the control aspect of the Isu, and the Hidden Ones being the Assassins. It... Like... Oh, I would have taken pretty much an RPG kind of game, kind of like this, uh, in ancient Egypt, being as a Magi, fucking around with shit, having kind of uh, more tactical kind of combat, and uh, they're trying to have it be kind of pretty much like Dark Souls-esque, more kind of like Witcher-esque kind of shit. Um, again, uh... We now switch over from nameless protagonist to Layla. Layla. 
But I want to kind of, I really want to hit on this kind of aspect because this was the biggest kind of shift in where I was like, I don't know if I want to play this. Uh, not because I'm not interested in these things, but they're not assassins until you're here. And then this is like, oh, it's like back to basics. Uh, but that's the problem. They haven't made an assassin game for a while. And then it's just like, ah, shit. We're pretty much back to Assassin's Creed 1 shit with overworld and bloat shit from normal Ubisoft open world shit that's become their part and parcel. But they're kind of like, we gotta shake this up. Layla or Aya? Layla Hassan. She was researching for Abstergo. Uh, they've got to get, like, an artifact. Again, just the Isu stuff. Now, since the apocalypse has been averted, now they're just trying to find different kind of shit uh, that the Isu have done, and the Isu are trying to come back. It's like, I, I really don't care about this. It's not a really well-done sci-fi story. I would rather just be like... I would rather than just excise it and just give us uh, the fucking historical stuff. And then maybe have some kind of weird throughput of like, here's ancient shit that you're gonna have to deal with. Okay. Uh, but it, it just really doesn't add much. It's like, oh god, we gotta deal with this again. And first in the beginning, I'm like, okay, we kind of have a plot, we kind of have a point, let's kind of see what's going on. But there really isn't. It's essentially the call, it turned into pretty much Call of Duty pump out one almost every year and it really hampered it with franchise fatigue and even kind of fatigued me on it where I'm like, yeah, I still have a lot of them, but I'm like, Ugh. this I liked was kind of more manageable in size, uh, but of course the pricing is what needs to be dealt with to affect on that. Uh, these are big. I understand that and I understand pricing is a bitch, but I mean, most of the games, I mean, shit, we just had a Star Wars Battlefront collection launch in the shittiest state. It should not be acceptable to have these products out with these kind of problems, where you pretty much have to wait until they're kind until they're fixed. And it's like, of course people aren't going to spend $60, $70, $100 on these kind of things, or even get into microtransactions where it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to play this thing. But that becomes an aspect of, like, Jesus won every year? What the fuck? Granted, they did start spacing these out. But, you're in ancient Egypt. Dealing at your bike. Your family's been killed. Running theme. And you're trying to kind of figure out and deal with the Order of the Ancients while creating the Hidden Ones Order. Creating the Assassins. Let's see here. Odyssey, Sparta. Let's see here. Peloponnesian War. Wait a minute. Yeah, Origins is like 49 BC. Odyssey takes place... 431 to 422 BC. Pretty much creating the whole kind of speed. Like, you don't even really have a blade. Uh, you use this kind of spear thing. It's like, uh, okay. Again, going further back. And still kind of dealing with the Order of the Ancients and being like, yeah, I'm trying to find your, like, sibling and shit. You can pick male or female. And it's just like, oh, oh, okay. The Staff of Hermes, Trigamistus, it, that's Layla's goal, it's like, who, who gives a shit? Let's see here. And of course they're fighting against each other once you learn Alexios and Cassandra. Let's see here. Ah, it's the cult here. Yeah, 
Yeah, and it's really kind of weird because, like, uh, whichever character you choose has been, like, immortal because they've got the Staff of Hermes guarding the secrets of Atlantis. It's like, what? And that you, as the Eagle Bear, pretty much were dismantling the cult by this other person pretty much controlling them. And you've got side quests and shit like that. That's also what kind of, it's like, big open world, checklist, side quests, uh, RPG choices and shit. And you're like, why am I doing this? Leading us here to Valhalla. And you're like, okay, this is the kind of big one that's supposed to make the uh, whole kind of new consoles cracking and racking. But you pretty much are just like a Viking going around in 873 CE. And of course we've got weird shit going on with Magnetic Field. Layla's trying to find shit. Ah, 855. Ivor... Barnes' daughter. Of course her town gets kind of fucked over. And she of course is pretty much connected to Odin, Basim is connected to Loki, and dealing with the whole kind of aspect of the Isu civilization told through the Ragnarok lens. It's like, alright, I just kind of want to be a Viking, but I don't want to, like, and then you're doing assassin kind of aspect, and you're like, oh god, Basim kind of helps you out with that uh, before he kind of goes crazy, and oh god, it gets nutty. And we're going back and forth between fucking visions and shit. Let's see. That they're reincarnations of these gods. Uh, Loki's personality just took over Basim and he's like attacking Ivor. And he gets trapped in a simulation. And then we get Layla kind of dealing with the whole kind of shit with the whole uh, magnetic field. And it's like, what the fuck's kind of going on here? You, you, this is like the kind of worst because you're going around and you're trying to conquer all this shit and be a Viking, but you then have to deal with this assassination kind of shit. That's just like, what? Well, I, if you want to be an assassin, that's cool. If you want to be a Viking, that's cool. Trying to be like Viking assassin it doesn't meld as well with this. It's like, what the fuck are you attempting to do? The clashing. And then add in open world bloat and trying to get around the goddamn place. And you're like, fuck. Which leads us here, which I heard pretty much a lot of people thinking and theorizing that this was DLC, which there's already DLC for Valhalla. And I like that it went back to, you're an assassin. However, Bassam has pretty much no personality other than I kill people and a Ginny scares me in my sleep, and it's actually my Loki persona, and then it takes me over at the end. You really have no connection to, really, your master who's teaching you the assassin arts, who is still pretty cool because she's voiced by uh, the actress who played Avasarala in the Expanse series, and there's just really nothing there. It's just bare-bones assassin kind of stuff. Now, granted, as a return to form to assassin stuff, it was enjoyable enough, but do I think that they're going to keep going on this route? No. I don't even think they're going to make like the smaller kind of ones to do it. Now, that kind of leads me to pretty much be like, I'm pretty much going to probably be done with this. One, because of how the series has been done. And two, because of that Ubisoft executive being like, gamers have to be comfortable with not owning games. And that's just not cool. Uh, I'd like to own my games, whether they be physically like this, or on PC. It's, like, digitally. There there needs to be that kind of stuff there. And I t take those two together, and you're like, uh, yeah. But I had enjoyment with this series because I liked learning about the Crusades. Uh, Renaissance Italy, Rome, Constantinople, the American Revolution told from this different kind of perspective. 
doing stuff that's kind of in a pirate kind of scenario. Uh, French Revolution, Industrial Revolution, uh, and then getting through the, like, Egyptian, uh, Spartan, and Viking kind of stuff in, like, the conquering of England, and how that changed different kind of things. However, these are balanced out by games that just started bloating and getting longer and just became checklists after checklists and everything not being balanced until it's an unwieldy and strange kind of thing where you're telling me that it's Assassin's Creed, but it's actually an action RPG with choices and stuff that's completely different. And I'm like, I, I, I just want to be an assassin and do sneaky sneaky and do that kind of stuff where it should have been more focused, where instead they tried to appeal to, okay, the history people. That, I understand you need to make a profit and make back money on your game and make sure everybody gets paid. However, you then need to figure out and hone in on your target audience more to make sure you have realistic expectations on what you need to sell for that game. If you focused on just the history, and gave that your all, I think you'd have a decent kind of following and a decent kind of audience. If you focus and actually put thought and effort into the sci-fi aspect, you would definitely get that. However, that's a harder kind of field to fight in when you've got a lot of different kind of ones already out there. I think they would have had a better kind of shot if they had just completely focused on the historical aspects and built that audience with love and care. I don't think that they've got that now because they've just tried to spread and do too much and now it's become bloated crazy as shit that is incoherent and fucking insane anymore. I mean, we had the whole thing with Desmond in the beginning and then that ended and then they just fucking spun out and was like, blah, blah, blah. and it's like, uh, all right, now we're playing as us trying to find other kind of shit for Abstergo and then we kind of break out, but then we get into another Abstergo person with Layla and then she's kind of done now trapped in a simulation doing her own kind of stuff. So you just kind of copied the Desmond shit. I don't care about that. I actually just want to see uh, your kind of takes and representation on like Assassins versus Templars and what you think the kind of resolution of that conflict can be. Other than that, the game design just really got completely onerous to the point where it's like, oh, fuck me, man. What the ever loving fuck is going on here? Like, certain kind of aspects I'd go through and I'd be like, all right. But now I'm just like, what the f I, I don't really care. I don't. <laughs> Never mind the fact of, like, Ubisoft's business practices. They have not handled this series well, or any kind of their series well, and I understand why they're, them as a company are in pretty kind of dire straits. Never mind the fact that they have all the uh, problems with sexual abuse scandals and everything, and not treating their employees well, and it's just like, Ubisoft. Fuck you, man. I mean, you... Stupid, man. Because I've had fun with these things. I've talked with a lot of my friends about them over the years. And we figure out where we were at in certain kind of games. I played with them in the certain kind of multiplayer aspects. Again, tacked on because Ubisoft's like, how can we make more money on this? Um, all right. And we tried to do kind of assassin kind of stuff. And then there was co-op kind of assassin stuff. And that didn't last long because it wasn't really well implemented. So, would I recommend this series? <laughs> That's a hard kind of thing. Uh, the Ezio Trilogy? Yeah. I could recommend that. Uh, the first Assassin's Creed is definitely aged. I mean, fucker, 17 years old. Jesus, 17 years old this year. I'm an old fuck. Just remember that the time to become an old fuck shrinks exponentially for some fucking reason. Shorter and shorter, so... Watch out. You're going to do something like that one day, and you're going to be like, ah, shit. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got a fuck ton here, and the only ones that I could really do are the Ezio trilogy that I would recommend. If you want an assassin -y kind of thing. If you want crazy RPG kind of stuff, I still, e still wouldn't even recommend... Uh, the Origins Odyssey Valhalla because 
you then have to deal with the shitty game design of Ubisoft. Yeah. This actually helped me out because uh, I'm rebuilding my games library on uh, PC, and I'm like, you know what? It's nice to have it, to be able to play it, but that's only if you really want to play it again. And as you go through, they get so more, so much more onerous. It's really kind of interesting because I'm thinking and I'm going, I really, first one, you'd have some problems because you're like, oh God, this is fucking weird. Uh, the Ezio ones are when they really got into their groove. If you want to play Pirate, Black Flag's pretty good. I'd recommend that over Skull and Bones. Um, Unity and Syndicate are a little bit fuckity dude. I don't know how they work on PC or any kind of other consoles. And then the other ones are just bloated kind of messes that don't know really what they kind of want to be. I mean, I have fun with them, uh, but it kind of varies. Look into them yourselves. Uh, look at certain kind of gameplays. Find anybody streaming to see if the gameplay interests you. Uh, find any YouTube videos or whatnot. Always look into that yourself because uh, I can give you what I would think, but I wasn't even thinking about talking about that as I was doing this and wanting to do this video. So... It's always kind of interesting. That's why I don't really go that much into a kind of script. Uh, because the thing is, some of these I'm just like, okay, yeah, I'd have to kind of go through and make sure that I understand what the kind of plot is. But most of the plot is, here's this history thing, here's this stupid kind of ice suit thing. And it just like goes back and forth. It's usually some kind of piece of eating you gotta gotta fuck with. It's like, all right, I kind of just want to do the history stuff, but that's me. And if that's not the target audience, I'm all right with jumping off. So, those are my opinions on the Assassin's Creed series. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you like them, if you don't like them, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Also, like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.